I'd like to thank God for another opportunity to preach His Word on this podcast. The My prayers for each and every person that walks the face of this earth comes out of Ephesians, the first chapter and the 15th verse. It says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made Him heavenly over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body it is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself Ephesians 3 14 says when I think of all this I fall to my knees and pray to the father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with inner strength through the spirit Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That is my earnest prayer for every person that walks the face of this earth, including myself, that the eyes of our understanding would be opened. Oh, to God's vast love and mercy and grace that he has for all of us. Glory to his name. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I praise you and I thank you for another opportunity to, oh, to preach your word. Guide and direct. Holy Spirit, touch my mind, touch my mouth. Guide me into what I should say, how I should say it, and what I need to be getting across today. Guide and direct me through this podcast. Help me to be the light that I should be. Father, I pray that you touch hearts. Guide them, help them to see that your word is true above all opinion. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. My scriptures today, you know, he's talking about God sent his word yesterday and healed them. And I I just want to uh, just build on what I was talking about yesterday, Jesus being the word. and, And by Jesus' stripes, we are healed. And I want I want to go into First Peter two twenty four. It says, "Who his own self?" Now get this: "Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed." Now look at the first part of that verse. It says, "It says, who his own self bear." Our sins in his own body on the tree. Now that just, that that basically, I'm going to read it in the New Living. I want to read it so, you know, if you didn't get it in the, in the King James, let's see if you can get it in the New Living. It says, he personally, 1 Peter 2, 24 in the New Living Translation says, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin. And live for what is right. By his wounds we are healed. That that verse of scripture has Christ 
bearing our sins. Now, you listen now. Bearing our sins on the cross at Calvary and taking the stripes that healed us in one scripture. Now, let's go to Matthew 8, uh, 8 17. He bore our sins in 1 Peter 2, 24, right? And most people that has ever heard the plan of salvation knows that Jesus Christ took the, took bore our sins on the cross at Calvary, so we don't have to. All we have to do is accept Him as our personal Savior. He has done and took all the punishment that we'll ever have to answer for for our sins. Jesus done that for us. He bore our sins on the cross at Calvary, so we did not have to. Okay, if he bore our sins and we don't ever have to 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 bear our own sins on the cross because Jesus Christ done that for us as a perfect sacrifice, a propitiation payment for our sins. Let's see what Matthew 8, 17 says for this fulfill. Now, this is a new living. I'm going to read it in the King James, too. It says this fulfill the word of the Lord. Through the prophet Isaiah, he said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. That is, that's the New Living Translation for Matthew 8, 17. Let's see what the King James Version says for Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Okay, 1 Peter 2, 24 says he bore our sins. And Matthew 8, 17 says he bare our sicknesses or he bore our sicknesses. So what, what, what is that? What am I getting at today? That Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ bore our sicknesses. He's seen, listen to this now. He's seen that we needed a savior. He died. He bore our, our sins on Calvary's cross. We've all been taught that. And to to be born again, all you got to do is confess him as Lord of your life and believe that God raised him from the dead to justify you. And we've, we've all heard that Jesus bore our sins on Calvary's cross. But Matthew 8, 17 just said that he bore our sicknesses also. I want you to understand that. If Jesus bore your sins and you don't ever have to carry them anymore, and so Jesus bear, bore your sicknesses in Matthew eight seventeen, you don't have to carry them anymore. Give those infirmities to the one that took them years and years and years ago. All you have to do is receive your healing today. You can receive healing today just like you received salvation. By faith, by God's grace, he's made provision for you. He's made provision for every one of us to be born again. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's salvation right there. That is salvation right there. But I'm not going to I'm not going to stop there. You can be born again today. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and was raised on the third day to justify you in the eyes of a holy and a righteous God. But I'm going to go on, Mount Martin. I'm I'm going to, I'm going to give you this formula here. It says confess with your mouth, believe it in your heart, you shall be saved, right? That's 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 easy. Romans 10 and 9, 10 and 10 says that. Okay, I'm going to go on to Mark eleven twenty two. 22. It says, Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So that just basically said the same way that you got salvation by believing in your heart and confessing it with your mouth, you can do the same thing with everything else, including healing, including healing. Confess you are healed. 
according to Matthew eight seventeen, according to First Peter two twenty four, according to Isaiah fifty three five. Those are healing scriptures. Claim those scriptures. Confess Jesus is my healer today. And I believe in my heart that he bore the stripes on Calvary's cross for my healing. That's what you have to do to be healed. That's all you have to do. It's the same thing as when you were born again. You get everything you need from God the same way. And that is confessing it with your mouth and believing it in your heart. Believe God's word above all opinion. Confess God's word out your mouth and believe it with, without a doubt. And I promise you, you shall have whatsoever you say. God has made provision for us for every single thing that we need in our lives. Salvation, healing, provision, whatever, victory in any circumstance. God has made provision for it. All we have to do is believe it and receive it. Believe that God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Confess it out your mouth that my God is supplying all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I give, Luke six thirty eight. I give and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over are men given to my bosom. Malachi 3 and 10 will tell you just exactly what God will do if you'll tithe and do as he asks you to do. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouses that there may be meat in mine house. This is talking about tithing now. I'm not talking about giving. I'm talking about tithing to your home church. It says, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for my sakes, and you shall, and for your sakes, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and you shall, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. He just said right there, if you'll pay your tithes, I'll open the windows of heaven. If you give me what's mine, God just said that. If you give me what is mine, first fruits, 10% off the top to your church. Go to where you get, or you're getting fed at and pay your tithes that God said in Malachi 3.10 that he'd open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you couldn't contain. He had rebuked the devourer for your sake. Who is the devourer? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That'd be Satan. He had rebuked Satan off of you. Why? Because you are doing what God said to do in his word. Believe God's word above all opinion. I promise you, he is your provider. He is your savior. He is your healer. He's whatever you need him to be. I promise you, he is a one size fits all, all circumstances, anything in your life, God can handle it, but you have to give it to him for him to handle it. He's not going to take it away from you. He's not going to beat you over the head and make you do something. That's the devil that does that. That's the pressure that the devil puts on somebody to push them and push them and push them and push them till they they just give in and do whatever he wants them to do. That's not God. God is a gentleman. He, that still small voice, quietly, he'll ask. He'll put something in front of you. If you don't take it, that's up completely up to you. But there's someone listening to this podcast that that needs to be born again. There's someone listening to this podcast that's away from God, that needs Him desperately in their life. 1 John 1 and 9 said, If we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart. Now, I'm I'm misquoting that. Let Let me read that. 1 John 1 and 9 said, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. 
So that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's all you have to, if you're away from God, if you've been born again and you're away from him, confess your sins, come home to him, repent and come home. If you've never been born again, the Bible says if you'll, if uh, Romans 10 and 9 said, if you'll confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you have to do is confess him as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. All you have to do if you're away from him is repent and turn to him come to him he's not here to smack you down when you get home and and tell you how sorry you are he's standing with open arms just like the father did in the prodigal son and come and and run to you and love you and and restore you clothe you put shoes on your feet a ring on the on your finger and celebrate because his child is home That's what God wants to see you doing today, coming to him. Come to him, whether you need salvation or you need restoration from where you're in your backslidden condition, whatever you need, come to him. Believe God's word today. If you're born again, if you've drawn close up to God and you need healing, you need provision in your life, believe him. Confess him as your healer. Confess him as your provider. And believe in your heart that he, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. God is not a man that he should lie. But whatever he has said, he will back it up. He will take care of it. Glory to his name. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all that you've done in this podcast. Guide and direct these people's hearts and lives. Use them for your honor and your glory. God, touch them. Help them to know and understand your will is your word. Glory to your holy name. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you're going, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Let us know. Let us know what God's doing in your life. Let us know what you need God to do in your life. We want to pray for you. We want to pray God's will in your life, and that is His Word. We want to agree with you according to God's Word, that He will do what He said He will do in His Word. Glory to His holy name. Go to our website. Let us know what God's doing in your life. That's the dash prodigalson.com